People are begging for you to sell Donna Karen, DFS, Loewe, Givenchy. Why aren't you selling any of these companies? And what makes you believe in these brands that are losing money? When I was managing family business, which was in a different sector, I happened to enter in contact with a group in France that was having problem, business problems. And in this group, there was Christian Dior. And I was interested by business, and I wanted to turn around this group and build on, which I think was at the time, the best asset, and the best asset was Christian Dior. I was interested in Christian Dior <clears throat> for a long time. The first time I was in New York, it's in uh, 71. And I remember the first time I arrived at uh, Kennedy Airport, I took a cab. And at the time, the president of the US was uh, Richard Nixon. And I started to talk to the cab driver. And he loved France. And he was interested in politics. I asked him, you love France, so do you know the French president? He said, no, I don't know the French president, but I know Christian Dior. And immediately, he stuck me and showed that the name of Christian Dior is one of the, if not the most known all over the world in many countries. When I go to China, when I go everywhere, it's the name which is the most well-known. So as far back as 71, I understood the power of a name. It's not enough, but I I think it's one reason when by chance I was in contact with the real company, I think it's when I had the idea of doing this. Yeah. Our culture is based mainly on creativity. And in a startup, the major reason for success <coughs> at the beginning is to have an idea, a, a creative idea, an innovative idea that is really putting the company with an advance to everybody else. But it's not enough. I think almost as important as the idea at the beginning is the execution and the fact that building on the ID must be very professional, very efficient, and that also makes a difference. I have seen a lot of startups with very interesting ideas, but with also some other competitors almost with the same ideas. But only one or two of them are successful. It's because the execution of their business plan. It's key for the long-term success of a startup to be able to execute well, I often meet students in marketing. I always tell them we don't do marketing because marketing is against what company like us should do. Because marketing, what is marketing? Marketing is to analyze what the customer wants and then try to follow what the customer is looking for and test what you create following these trends we do completely differently. We create new products and sometimes it fails, but when it's successful, the customers follow. The marketing is when we have these products, how with these products, which people want, maximize the desire. It was our business, you asked a question about luxury. Luxury, for me, is how can you create desire? The most important word in our business is desire, how to create desire. And when you have the product, then you have to create a good environment in the shops, and you have to present it well, you have to do good films if it's a perfume, good advertisement either in the magazine or in the internet if it's a product. That's the way we see in my group, the way to put product in contact with the consumers. I was wondering, is te technology and the use of internet universally a good thing in your business sector or are there brands that you purposely try to keep offline? Internet is more and more important. If I judge by the budget that we spend in the media, we are reducing the amount spent in magazine to increase the spending in all the internet media. So it's more and more important and what is key also is the fact that now more and more the customer they want to first when they want a product they go immediately on their computer on their telephone and they check the product so the way a brand is presented to the world is extremely influenced by the internet which explains why when you are on the site of a brand not only you see the product but you see the history of the brand you see the craft
craftsmanship which is behind and more and more customers are, are looking at that. They want to understand what is really behind the brand and they like the product but they want to see more. And with the internet it's extremely easy. And also they want to be able to buy a product easily. We have now in many countries including uh, the UK, you can buy a product and get it very fast in a shop. Or if you go on the internet, you see what is available in the shop in central London. If you want such or such product, you can find the availability of the product, which is growing faster and faster. For instance, at the beginning on Facebook, when a brand was sending a message to its followers, you could get them immediately. Today, it's not the case. When you send a message, you can get maybe one or two percent of your followers. Even a brand like Dior that have millions of followers, they, they don't get the message unless you pay something to Facebook. And then you can go uh, on many followers uh, and you can even get on the competitors' followers if you pay. So if you are Dior and if you pay Facebook, you can send your products on the followers of Chanel. People are begging for you to sell Donna Karen, DFS, L'OEV, uh, let's look at Givenchy. Why aren't you selling any of these companies and what makes you believe in these brands that are losing money? Uh, for, uh, first of all, I think selective distribution uh, was losing money two years ago. But this year, globally, between DFS, Sephora, Miami Cruise Line, it's coming back to profitability. Mainly Sephora, I must say, in the US, more than DFS, but Sephora is very profitable. And uh, as I said, if one day we must sell something, first we want to turn it around and make it profitable. And for the time being, it's exactly what we are doing with every of the brand that you have mentioned. We are investing for a long time. We are buying, investing in startups of any kind. Fashion startup, digital startup. I think the best example I can give you is a Sephora. You know, when we invested in Sephora in the 90s, it was a startup. And today, it's maybe the largest retailer of beauty products in the world and we have started also very early beginning of 2000 a digital operation which is based in San Francisco where we have one of the best digital team in the world and uh, it's extremely successful for instance we are number one seller on the digital on the web uh, of beauty products in the US far above Amazon so we know how to manage uh, startups and how to make them grow because remember that the goal of the startup is not to stay a startup the goal of a startup is to grow and to become, if possible, a, a, a large company.